Welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV. We carry on talking about club rugby. And, of course, as you know, as we've been saying for a while now, there's a chius amongst uh, the players, amongst the clubs at the moment, as many of the clubs are busy getting back to some form of action. Uh, but, of course, lots of balls in the air at the moment, literally <laughs> and figuratively. Joining me on the line now from Western Province Rugby, Faisal Felton. Faisal, nice to have you back on the line. How are you? Uh, good evening, JP. Good evening. Yes, no, it's definitely good to be back. It's long overdue. Uh, can't wait. As I said, you know, happy. Um, you know, we just want to get out on the field and we want to get cracking and getting back into rugby. Yeah. So um, you, you, you would have heard my introduction there. So obviously, the big thing that everybody's talking about is the fact that clubs, some clubs, are now officially allowed to play some friendlies and. And we've already seen one or two games. Our first game that we looked at uh, this week was uh, is well on, on the show. Rockland's up against Gordon's Bay Pioneers, but certainly um, more friendlies on the cards. It must be very exciting for you guys. No, definitely, Jopi. I think you know uh, from the start it's a phased approach, and I think the good thing now with the friendlies it sort of gives us an opportunity now to ensure that all the necessary protocols that are in place. And at the same time, you know, it's also a learning curve from our side in terms of making sure that we've got all our ducks in a row. And I think in terms of government and SARU, in terms of the regulation, I think from a club side is just to make sure that we tick all the boxes. And I think from, from my side, from the officer's side, you know, it's just about the HMR and making sure that we all page uh, when we go out there in terms of our match day protocol. So I think, you know, we're really looking forward to getting out on the park again. Um, but I think, you know, the key thing and the biggest challenge we got this year is obviously with COVID and certain protocols that need to be in place. On my side, you know, we had to look at the protocols that were passed down from SA Rugby and government. And it's about making sure from a club side, how do we adapt and how do we conform to what the regulation requires? So what does that mean for you guys, Faisal? Does that mean lots of meetings and lots of discussions and, and lots of documents? Um, I think from our side, the key thing here is more in terms of the education from the club perspective and the responsibility and accountability from the club side. I think it's more about understanding what is required, what is needed. And as you know, on a Saturday, we would have about 170 matches, and from our side as an office, we can't be everywhere. So we rely a lot in terms of clubs, uh, you know, in terms of ensuring the protocols are in place. So you know, when when we have the when, you know for the friendly matches and that, we want to make sure that everybody understands exactly what they, the the requirements are and what is their role and function on the match day. So there's a number of I wouldn't say challenges, but there are a number of small things you know we need to take. Uh, a note of, uh, you know, on a match day, uh, which, you know, under normal circumstances wouldn't be, uh, you know, wouldn't be a problem. So while you're looking at friendly fixtures and trying to get the clubs back up and running, you also have currently got a big drive um, for women's rugby. Um, we spoke about this a few weeks ago, but of course you're driving the fact that every club must have a women's uh, representative, a women's champion. No, definitely, Jopi. I think this year it's even more uh, bigger, and I think the response has been great in terms of women's, uh, you know, involvement in sport. And I think from a, you know, from our side, you know, the focus is primarily not on the playing of the game, but also in terms of the, you know, uh, who's involved in terms of the running, uh, whether it's you know the champ club, whether it's from a coaching, whether it's from a fan. Um, I think the key thing is just having, you know, that uh, network in terms of ladies that's out there that's active. As you know, the women's competition is starting in two weeks' time. So, you know, from our side, the thing now is making sure that the drive for ladies, you know, is big and, the you know, the communication is out there, the networking, the marketing in terms of the ladies, that anybody wanting to play, they have access, you know, to playing, yeah. But you're also saying to the clubs out there, it's not about the fact that you must have a game, a team that you can put in place. You're saying create a woman's structure so that uh, young girls and women can just, as a starting point, put their name on the list and be part of the club. You don't have to wait for a game. You can just join your club. Am I, am I right? Definitely, JP. I think, you know, the meetings that we've had with the clubs uh, currently, it's more focused on in terms of how can you assist the community, especially the ladies within the communities, from a social perspective, in terms of, 
of having social, you know, meetings uh, in the sense of, you know, we were looking at having a six touch tournament where the ladies are actively involved. Uh, you know, we have a bit of workshops that's taking place. Um, so I think the whole drive is more about, you know, the community aspect and getting the ladies involved in terms of, you know, the support structures as such. But you also mentioned uh, workshops. Um, and you continue to drive that. You continue the education process and the online meetings with the clubs. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. That's still ongoing, JP. I think the one thing, as you know, we mentioned before that we've learned is the online virtual meetings and the convenience of having these meetings. So I think the feedback that you've has been, you know, phenomenal. Uh, you know, everybody's supporting it. The, the numbers that's been attending these workshops have been great. So even though, you know, we're back out on the field, we will still continue having these workshops. And I think it's definitely something that adds value, you know, to club rugby and the growth of club rugby. And then, of course, uh, the, the obvious question right now is you guys are still busy with a phased approach. Uh, clubs still have to go through a phase one, a phase two before being allowed to play their friendly fixtures. Yeah, you still got your, you know, your eight week program, uh, certainly your phase one is your four weeks of conditioning. Your phase two will be your, your, your contact training. And then basically phase three is now where we start to play. Um, the one key thing with returning to play is obviously is, um, you know, from Western Province's side, we must, you know, commend the clubs. I think from their side, they've, you know, the support that we've been given and the, you know, the, uh, the information given, you know, to the clubs and that they, they took a decision basically, you know, from a club side, we've, we, we, we've got um, the senior sides in the regions, it's a first and a second, and in the Super League, it's first, second and a 21. And I think the key key reason for that decision that the clubs took was based on, you know, COVID and the protocols in terms of times. So I think that, you know, that is one managing the virus and making sure, you know, that the no spectators that's allowed at the games, that there's no cross uh, contamination uh, between matches and that. So that's one thing now from our side that, you know, we'll ensure from a club perspective that everybody understands exactly what is required with regards to match day protocols. Um, so we'll say to you guys then, of course, uh, first thing is remain safe. Um, we hope that everybody's in good health and good spirits and we'll, we'll keep following the progress. And then, of course, we'll, we'll be saying uh, also, yeah, well done. And well done for getting us to the point where you are now. We know it's been months and months and a year and a half of, of reaching out to the clubs. And as we see on the top banner, you're yeah, staying connected. You know, so really to you guys, Tipping the hat, well done for all the hard work you've been doing behind the scenes, and I think with uh, and and we we look forward to seeing even more progress. So yeah, thanks for joining us. From our side, thanks a lot, JP, and good luck to all the teams out there on the Saturday. As you say, stay safe, and yeah, let's look forward to the season. There we go, folks. Phases felt in uh, Western Province rugby, so we'll wait for the announcements. We'll wait and see what happens uh, um, over the next few weeks. Right, folks, as you know, that's a wrap from us then. You can, of course, uh, uh, catch us again on Saturday morning on the repeat uh, at 9 a.m. from 9 to 10. We will tell all of you out there, remember, practice all of the health and safety protocols, wash your hands, always wear a mask, and remember, practice uh, social distancing as much as possible. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye.